following sponsors support public television and Hello Paradise. Grand Residences, a welcome escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. With an array of services, amenities, and surprises. Grand Residences in Cancun, Mexico. Los Arboles Hotel, located in the Palm Springs Historic Movie Colony District. Tiled floored rooms, a courtyard pool, jacuzzi, event spaces, and El Mirasol Cocina Mexicana Restaurant. LosArbolesHotel.com Information about desert hotels, golf, restaurants, and attractions can be found at palmspringsvacationdiscounts.com. You can't touch this. Beautiful. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. We've brought you to the Eagle Falls Golf Course at the Fantasy this. Springs Casino for the Wounded Warriors Celebrity Golf Tournament. It's a wonderful annual tournament that Fred the Hammer Williamson puts on every year. You're going to meet some ex-athletes, some celebrities, and they're all here for a great cause. All of that and more on this episode of Hello Paradise. This is Fred the Hammer Williamson, and welcome to the fifth annual Wounded Warrior Project Golf Tournament here at Fantasy Springs Resort. We are having a good time for a good cause. Wounded Warrior Project, as you know, helps all the wounded warriors that were injured in Iraq and Afghanistan. Hi, my name is Willie Maples. I'm the director of golf for the Eagle Falls Golf Course, part of the Fantasy Springs Resort Casino. Eagle Falls is a 6,715 yard designed by Clive Clark. Now finishing hole the 18th is a wonderfully designed par five features a magnificent 40-foot waterfall, 40-foot wide, 40-foot drop, and the cart path goes right beside the waterfalls. We are here with Richard Roundtree, who of course is so well known from the movie Shaft. It's so good of you to be here. How's your game going? I beg your pardon? You asked me about my game? No, it's non-existent. I'm having fun. Um, uh, it's not about the game here. It's, it's about the uh, wounded warriors and support of them. Uh, that's why I'm happy to be here every year. But my golf game, you, you seriously asked me about my golf game? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna watch you. Oh no. This beautiful GMC Sierra was donated by Jessup Motors, and it's yours if you can make a hole in one on this par three. Now let's say you just get onto the green. Well, then I understand you get a sleeve of balls, a hat, or raffle tickets. So you really can't lose either way on this particular hole here at Eagle Falls. We are here with the great Jim Brown, held the rushing record for so many years. Is it true that you are a member of three different halls of fame? Uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Lacrosse, track, and of course football. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I know so many men who showed up today just to meet you. 
Well, that's a wonderful compliment, but I think it really came because of a cause. It's a wonderful thing to think of our soldiers and our wounded heroes, and uh, I'm happy to be a part of it. And if they like the fact that I was a good football player, I love that too. Well, it is good of you to be here because it is such a great, great cause and one you don't hear enough about these days, do you? Absolutely right. Uh, you know, our soldiers are sacrificing all the time. The political politics go on, but they have to defend the country regardless. And most of them are so loyal to each other until when they're wounded and they want to get back healthy so they can go back and fight some more with their buddies that they left behind. So that's very admirable, and I'm totally behind it. Well, I, I assume that you are a hero of so many, and it sounds as though those men are your heroes. Oh, absolutely. There's nothing like it. Football is so pale compared to having to go and uh, defend your country because it's life and death, and you have to believe, and you have to make tremendous sacrifice. So what we do on football field is a little physical contact, <laughs> but uh, we have great admiration for those people. We've been talking to a lot of people about Fred's rough, gruff exterior that he really tries to put on because it's part of his macho film persona. But deep down, he's just about the nicest guy in the world, isn't he? I would say he probably is a little teddy bear or something, you know. Uh, I've been knowing him for a long time, believe me when I tell you that. Uh, and he's always been a really warm-hearted person. You know, and it's no surprise to me that he came down here and probably put together this wounded warrior. With Sugar Ray Leonard, certainly the most famous boxer and I think the most handsome boxer ever to have lived. How's your game going? My game is going great. In fact, I'm with a, a great bunch of guys and a wonderful lady. You know, we all have the same purpose in mind, and that's uh, uh, acknowledging and, and raising funds for wounded warriors. Great cause. It's an incredible cause, and uh, we need to do more. Well, you were talking earlier about how, how you can remember some of the rounds of some, some of your fights. What particularly stands out in your mind? Are there any great rounds that stick out in your mind right now? Well, I have to be honest. The fact that Tommy Hearns back in 1981 um, was a very significant fight in Las Vegas, Caesars Palace. And um, because I remembered that it <clears throat> kind of brought the best out of me and I brought the best out of him. And it was over 100 degrees in that ring. And uh, he had me beat uh, after 12 rounds and uh, I had to come on strong in the later rounds, 15 rounds, to, uh, to defeat him. And I remember that fight because it was such a defining moment in my career. We're here with Jay Johnston. Now tell us about your handicap. How good are you? Well, uh, if I use the uh, Steve Yeager foot wedge, the Steve Garvey little short toss out of the trap, and the Frank Sinatra drop when you're in trouble, I've got a great score. with the amazing smooth as silk Jamal Wilkes. It's such a pleasure to have you here. How is your game? Well, my game's been so-so thus far. It's still early, so I'm, I expect to warm up, but I'm having a blast. It's a great, uh, I'm really enjoying it, and uh, being in the desert, and, and of course the cause. A wonderful cause, and you're friends with Fred. Yes, the hammer. <laughs> the Wounded Warrior Project has given us a clip, so let's take a look at that clip right now. friends that 
carry me. We went to war and we went to protect home. I encountered an improvised explosive device when I headed out for an early morning combat mission. Our base was hit by a mortar attack, and I happened to be uh, a little too close to that when it did hit. We went out to go find the guys that shot them, and they ambushed us on the way there. Medevac couldn't come down and get me, so they had to throw me in a Humvee and try to get me out of there as soon as possible. There are some things that aren't going to be the same for the rest of your life. On September 11, 2007, I got blown up. I'd broken both arms and legs in my lower back. Rehabbed for 18 months, 32 surgeries. I ended up losing my right eye. I didn't think I'd run again walk again. Cycling was absolutely out of the question. I didn't know if I'd be able to provide for my family. As an injured soldier, two other injured soldiers, the bond is instant. The minute you got wounded, you know, going through your mind, you're like, oh, I'm going to be in a wheelchair, you know, I'm going to be a cripple. For the rest of my life, I'm, that's, that's me. You're riding a bike. You're doing things you never thought you would do. It's amazing. Going on soldier ride, that is what showed me there are no limits. Anything that comes my way, I'm willing to do it. I was trying to prove something to myself. What I'm actually capable of, and still capable of, even though I was injured. Whether you're Marine, your Army, your Air Force, Navy, it doesn't matter. You all share a common bond of service. And ultimately, that service has left you in a state of physical or emotional damage. I was withdrawing myself from my family, withdrawing myself from my friends. Whether the wounds are visible or they're the unseen wounds, traumatic brain injury, any form of combat stress that's affecting their lives and their families' lives, this is a form where they can find the camaraderie of competing with themselves to fulfill a mission. That's something that a lot of those guys thought they left on the battlefield. They don't have to face society individually. They do it as a group, so they're there to provide moral support uh, for each other. It brought me out of my shell. Showing these guys and girls that there is life after war and after an injury is just my little gift to them. We're here to support them, show them that we all care. If you're going to be a part of the community you live in as an organization, what better way to show it than saying you're going to take care of your nation's heroes? And you're going to do it today and you're going to do it as long as it's needed. I really loved that. And now you're going to like this upcoming piece. Eat, drink, and be merry. We're here at Feed Restaurant in La Quinta, and Chef Francois is about to cook up his signature dishes. Let's get started. Right now I'm going to prepare for you one of our signature seafood dishes. It's a sautéed Alaskan halibut tagine. So I start out with our Alaskan halibut. Uh, we have our uh, oven roasted cauliflower, cherry tomatoes, piquillo peppers from Spain, couscous, chermoula, which is a Moroccan vinaigrette that we make with our own preserve uh, lemons, and just herbs to garnish it with. So we sauteed the Alaskan halibut. Serve it on top of sautéed cauliflower, keo peppers, cherry tomatoes, and a Moroccan vinaigrette, which we make from our own preserved lemons. Voila! Chef, this dish was absolutely delicious. Oh, thank you very much. And I understand it's one of your signature dishes? Yeah, it's our sautéed Alaskan halibut tagine and it's served on top of sautéed cauliflower, piquillo peppers, cherry tomatoes, uh, with the chermoula, which is a Moroccan vinaigrette, a very light, flavorful, healthy sauce, and served with a little bit of couscous on the side. 
Yeah, I definitely noticed that sauce because, you know, sometimes with cauliflower it can be a little bit bland, but when I was tasting it, it had a nice little kick to it. Yeah, it's got a lot of different flavors and heat from a couple different kinds of peppers in there, so. Yeah, that's great. So would this be maybe a good choice for someone who's trying to watch their figure or be a little bit healthy because of the halibut? Yeah, I mean, don't look at me, for example, but, you know, never trust a skinny chef. That's what I say. I have heard that before, <laughs> yeah. and it's always turned out to be really true. If the chef doesn't eat his own food, why should you? But yes, it, it is a healthy dish. It's very light. There's just a little bit of olive oil in the vinaigrette. Otherwise, you know, it's a very healthful dish. Great. So, uh, might I ask, how did you get started in cooking? Yep, I grew up in a French restaurant family. Uh, my family has a hotel and restaurant south of France, and so... Age two, I filleted my sister's goldfish. When I was seven, I cooked my pet rabbits and pretty much been downhill from there. Wow, I have never heard of a start like that before ever, but I mean, there's always a first for everything. Exactly. <laughs> and so then how did you get down to the desert? Um, I was just really intrigued by the concept that Lee was putting together here. Uh, I've been cooking Mediterranean food all my life. My mother's from Marseille, so it's kind of in my blood. Okay, very nice. And who are some of your culinary inspirations? Um, you know, going back in history, I have um, quite a few cookbooks. So going back all the way to Karem and then Escafier was a big influence and obviously more modern chefs. You know, now I'm really intrigued by just different flavors around the world. There's a lot of great chefs in Australia doing Arabic food, which is a big influence here and all over the country. You know, the whole food scene's kind of exploded here. That's it from Feig. We brought you to the Eagle Falls Golf Course at the Fantasy Springs Casino for the Wounded Warriors Celebrity Golf Tournament. We're here with television spokeswoman, the beautiful Heather Michaels. Heather, how's your game going? It's going fabulous. I'm carrying my team, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you feel strongest in? Your short game, your long game, putting? Um, teeing off, I hit it nice and straight down the fairway every time. So I may not have the distance that the guys have, but I can definitely hang with them. And my putting is superb. We've been talking about, uh, he's got this rough exterior, but people who know him just say he's such a teddy bear deep down. He is not a rough exterior. <laughs> who told you that? <laughs> oh, I think he puts on a persona. Oh, I think he puts on that persona of being a yeah, tough guy. Yeah, yeah. He's just a dynamic individual. We are here with the very handsome Christian Okoye of the Kansas City Chiefs. Christian. Is your game as terrific as you appear here today? You're just such a good-looking guy. No, it's not. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> but I tell you what, we're having fun. This, this is for a good cause, so we're having fun. You have such a beautiful little accent. Where, where am I picking up? I'm from Nigeria. Oh. Yeah. How is the golf course treating you today? You know, this, this is a very, very nice golf course, and of course, a beautiful day to play. Uh, to raise money for the Wounded Warriors. So, um, you know, on behalf of all the guys that are out here, um, you know, we support the troops who are protecting America and the ones that came back injured. Um, it's um, all on us to uh, support them and tell them thank you. Hi everybody, Dan McGrath from CBS Radio, EZ 103.1 here in the desert. You know me, you know I love the desert, the Coachella Valley is the greatest, and there's so many great things going on this time of the year. I always look forward to Hammer's Tournament, the Wounded Warrior Project Tournament. We need to help these guys in any way we can, and that's where everybody's at. It's the biggest crowd I've ever seen. From the beautiful Eagle Falls Country Club and Golf Course, now we're taking you somewhere for a getaway.
We've brought you to the beautiful Mission Inn in Riverside, and no doubt you have passed this when you've been on the 91 freeway, and you might have thought this is an actual mission. But the real story is much more interesting than that. We're here with Oliver Yunaka, the marketing director at the Mission Inn, and you were telling me that this courtyard turns 100 years old this year. It does. We celebrate the Spanish patio centennial this year. It turns a whopping 100 years old. And so many famous footsteps have come through here. Teddy Roosevelt, uh, JFK. Barbara Streisand, her husband, a number of individuals have frequented the Mission Inn Hotel and Spa. Are the rooms comfy? The rooms are extremely comfortable. And the spa? The spa, you will love the Tuscan-inspired spa, which, as a matter of fact, turns 10 years this year. Tell us the fascinating history of how the Mission Inn came to be. The fascinating history is it started as a you know, small uh, structure uh, that's no longer here. Uh, the original owner, Frank Miller, built this amazing property around it. It was built after the mission style, but it is not technically a mission. This property is a historical gem, and the maintenance and upkeep is incredible. Both Dwayne and Kelly Roberts have a very sincere passion of maintaining the historical significance, but making sure that the current amenities are up to par for our contemporary guests. What's interesting is for, I know all the ladies who are watching are very familiar with Tiffany's, the jeweler. Well, the grandfather, Tiffany, designed the actual windows, the stained glass windows in our chapel. And those are glorious. Oliver, what would the Mission Inn be without a chapel? You know, Joni, not much. And this is one of a few properties in the entire nation that actually has a resident chapel. You know, I imagine many, many happy brides must be married in the chapel and then celebrate out in the courtyard. Too many to name. We do roughly about 300 weddings a year here. Wow. Well, let's go in and see the chapel. Let's go. Oliver, this is every bit as beautiful as you said it was, and I noticed these reliefs here on the side of the saints and scholars throughout the ages. How did those come here? Those came to us from a Belgian convent, and as you can see, they're delicately placed inside of our chapel here, placed beneath the original Tiffany stained glass windows, and we're very, very proud of them. Beautiful, and this retablo behind us is spectacular. It is indeed. This retablo is carved of a Spanish cedar wood with an 18 karat gold overlay, so it's literally a bride's dream. It is a bride's dream. From the bells to the other artifacts you see here, we welcome any and all brides. Okay, right, so it's non-denominational. It's beautiful. So, Oliver, this is the famous Casey's Cupcakes. This is the famous Casey's Cupcakes. Would you believe I actually saw that episode where she won the Cupcake Wars? No, we're very proud of Casey, our owner, Casey Reinhardt, for winning Cupcake Wars. It looks like it's adorable, and she is certainly adorable. But before we go in, it occurs to me that I have not seen the actual restaurants yet. Before we have dessert, we should hear about the main course. Absolutely. So we have Dwayne's, which is our signature our restaurant, our steak and seafood restaurant. We have Bella Stratoria, which is to our right, and then we have Las Campanianas. And then we have Mission and Restaurant. I've eaten there, that's fabulous. Yes, yes, yeah. And we also have our presidential lounge. That's good enough. Let's do the cupcakes. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous, thank you. Well, that is going to do it for us from the historic Mission Inn in Riverside. Come by and see this place, it's amazing. This is Gracie, she is my service animal. She was a prescription while I was in the uh, Warrior Transition Battalion at Fort Lewis. Um, she uh, has about 40 rounds of golf under her belt. So she will actually stay in the cart and watch us play. She's been trained to not chase the ball or the birds. She will, however, roll her eyes at me if I hit one bat. That's going to do it for us. We are at the Eagle Falls Golf Course. We've seen some great golf. We've talked to some wonderful people. But most importantly, we've raised some money for a great cause, the Wounded Warriors Project. Until next time, this is Joni Ravenna, and I'll see you on the next Hello Paradise.
Tony's Hair, provided by Heads Up Hair Design, located at 460 South Palm Canyon Drive in Palm Springs. Heads Up is a full-service salon and day spa, located in the heart of downtown Palm Springs. The following sponsors support public television and Hello Paradise. Grand Residences, a welcome escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. With an array of services, amenities, and surprises. Grand Residences in Cancun, Mexico. Los Arboles Hotel, located in the Palm Springs Historic Movie Colony District. Tiled floored rooms, a courtyard pool, jacuzzi, event spaces, and El Mirasol Cocina Mexicana Restaurant. LosArbolesHotel.com Information about desert hotels, golf, restaurants, and attractions can be found at PalmSpringsVacationDiscounts.com The Desert Entertainer proudly supports public television and KVCR.